Today's topic is a very important one if you find yourself doing any kind of backcountry driving in the forest service roads or a bumpy high desert road or where have you. I call it assertive driving. Now a little background what I mean by assertive driving. I come from a particular area of the country, a particular background where we can be a little colorful and very passionate when driving. Um, Joan and I have a lot in common, but we do have some differences, particularly with our upbringing. She's a second generation PhD, went to museums for fun while growing up, and had a good cultural upbringing. I did too, but in a different way. Um, I describe my upbringing as sounding a bit like a, a B-side to a Bruce Springsteen song. Good way to illustrate that is when we were on a camping trip, we bumped into a mutual friend, socially distanced, and we were asking how she was doing. She just came back from paramedic training in Rhode Island of all places, which immediately made me perk up. And I'm like, how'd you like Rhode Island? Now, this mutual friend knows nothing of where I came from or my particular background. So this was not prod at all, just what she said naturally. She says, well, yeah, they were very passionate, very dedicated, but it's these older Portuguese and Italian guys. Um, seems like they're yelling all the time, but I realize they're really not. And that's a good segue into what I call the assertive driving the differences. One day I was working here in Moab and Joan went up to the mountains by herself and she came back a few hours later with a big smile on her face. I said, Joan, you seem so happy. And she's like, yes, you'd be very proud of me. I was a little more assertive with my driving with some tourists. I'm like, really? Now, a little background. Here in Moab, we get a lot of tourists. People who are otherwise responsible drivers and considerate drivers just seem to check their brains when they come here. In this particular case, Joan saw a Sprinter van with California plates and what she described as a foo-foo dog popping its head out. And they had a GoPro and they were just in the middle of the road. You know what they were filming? Cows, cows on a mountain road. Now, I don't know what they have in California or where they're from, but cows seem pretty common. Even when I was back in the Northeast of Rhode Island, I would see cows. So not sure why someone would want to GoPro them. But in any case, Joan was sitting there and she told me how she voiced her concerns. I'm like, oh really, what did you do? Well, I gave them some time at first. Oh, that's cool. Being considerate's a good thing. But then they didn't move after half an hour. Oh, I'm sorry, half a minute. And then I saw the foo-foo dog stick its head out. I'm like, really, what did you do? So, well, I beat my horn. Okay, it kind of went toot-toot. Okay, that's cool, let him know. Then I went another half a minute. What'd you do after that? I told them to move. Oh, that's great, Joan, what'd you say to them? I said, excuse me, please, I need you to move. And I'm looking, that's a little different than what I would consider assertive um, driving in the mountain roads. So I thought to myself, you know, it's time to give a lesson um, of a more colorful way to get people to move who are coming from California in a sprinter van with a foo-foo dog doing GoPro of cows and who knows why. In any case, here's how I would approach it. So I would wait. That's a great thing. That's an awesome thing. And I would do the little, what I call a polite beep as well. Beep, beep. But then after 30 seconds, here's where I would change. I'd be like, hey, now notice I said, hey, that's to get your attention. If I said, hey, that's a little more low key. Now to translate into corporate English that many of you speak, hey would be, excuse me, I would like your attention, please. The hey is pay attention to me now. I'm saying something. Hand motions really are effective. If you can do a bit of a Northeast accent, even better. Now, once you have their attention, you can get a little colorful with it. I would go, hey, hashtag, move the van. Eventually, they should move. People from California, the foo-foo dog and a GoPro, probably aren't used to a Northeast accent in the middle of the LaSalle Mountains on some bumpy dirt road. Usually, they'll move the van. In Joan's case, she was very polite, and they just stood there, and they barely moved according to what she said. So if you practice again, hey, Hashtag, move the van. They will probably move it. Now, there are some big caveats with this. Do not, do not, do not do this to a truck 
that looks like it's a rancher truck, possibly with an NRA sticker on it, not going to work too well. I don't care what kind of method you use, what kind of hand motions you use, it's not going to work. So you probably aren't afraid to be vocal back in a different way. But you know what? The ranchers here aren't dumb enough to park in the middle of a road, blocking traffic on purpose so they can go pro some cows. So that's my advice to it. Don't use corporate English. Be a little more colorful. Practice the hand motions. It came naturally to me, but you can perfect it too. If you can affect a Northeast accent, so much the better. So remember, not corporate English. Excuse me, please. Would you mind moving? Go, hey, move the van now. I guarantee they won't stay there GoPro anymore. They may think, well, they'll have their own colorful stories to tell back in California. So that is my quick lesson on assertive driving, Northeast style, or we can even say Rhode Island style. That doesn't work for everyone, but I think it'll make things a little more smooth and it'll certainly give you some good stories to tell afterwards.